this happen? How did the wheels fall off this fast? J.D. Vance got to be on the worst potential VP run since Sarah Palin said anything. Welcome to Street Politics. My name is Reese Waters. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the page. Are you a racist? Do you hate Mexicans? Bro, I barely even know you who starts a conversation like that how is this our first entry into jd vance world are you just trying to see if it's cool to unleash all the dark thoughts that came out of the crevices of that bowl cut why would you even ask me something like that this issue is personal i nearly lost my mother to the poison coming across our border that's not gonna age well it's amazing how these trump nut cradlers write books, but then forget what they put in them. So J.D. Vance is over here lying to you guys, saying his mother was almost a victim of fentanyl poisoning and shit came from the border, right? But his book said otherwise. His mother had a lot of issues, a lot of substance abuse issues as well, and she was a nurse who stole prescriptions from patients. He said it himself. And this is 30 years ago before anyone ever heard the word fentanyl. And just think about the patients who had their medication taken, had to sit there in pain for no other reason than she wanted to feel special between 3 and 5 p.m. on that particular day as she watched her stories, and then don't even get the credit for going through that pain for the historical record you blame it on fentanyl. And, and also, how do you forget what's in your own book? Do you just, you just wake up every day and reinvent yourself? Who do you think you are, Byron Donalds? In many ways, what Trump is, is just another opi opioid. He's something that's gonna take the pain away. He's gonna make people feel better for a little while. But at the end of the day, the problems are still gonna be there. This is an evolution, and I know you've been asked about this before, about past comments that you've made about Donald Trump. Uh, you've said, I've never, I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole, cultural heroine, noxious and reprehensible. Now this was when J.D. Vance first burst upon the political scene. This is what he had to say. I gotta ask, are you loyal to anybody? Look, I, I love my wife so much. I love her because she's who she is. Obviously, she's not a white person, and we've been acute, attacked by some white supremacists over that. But I, I just, I love Usha. I, she's such a good mom. Whoa, 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 whoa. You had me at but. Obviously, she's not a white person, but why is there a but? She shouldn't have to be a white person for you to love her. Here you are apologizing for the fact that your wife is not a white person. Way to legitimize all the knuckleheads that are coming in with racism who you know are there and you wanna make sure feel perfectly comfortable so you throw your Indian wife under the bus. I actually feel bad for her. Okay, never mind. No, I don't. My bad. My bad. I, I'm sorry. I didn't realize she was Nikki Haley Brown. Now, I, I didn't realize she was Nikki Haley, Vivek Ramaswamy, Dinesh D'Souza, throw all under minorities under the bus to achieve peak whiteness. I, di I didn't know she was from that package of the Crayola. Our likely opponent, Kamala Harris, because, you know, she said a couple of days ago that I showed no loyalty to the United States, that I have no loyalty to the United States. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know Kamala. I served in the United States Marine Corps and I built a business. What the hell have you done other than to collect a government check for the past 20 years? Now, first of all, there are a lot of different people that are questioning your loyalty. It is not just Kamala Harris. Obviously, your wife could question your loyalty based on what you just said. Your constituents could question your loyalty. Trump could question your loyalty. Your own face 
could question your loyalty given the fact that you like to cover it uh, with so much blush and foundation. Apparently, the entire country can question your loyalty as well. Dish you? What the hell have you done other than collect a government check for the past 20 years? Nah, we're not going to do that. Now, nah, nah, see, J.D., you got to steer clear of all that. You got to steer clear of leaning into those kinds of, of tropes. You, you got to steer clear of that because Kamala Harris was a prosecutor and a D.A. and an attorney general and a senator before serving as vice president. And you wrote a book. A book that you apparently didn't even read because you out here claiming that it was fentanyl. So we want to steer clear of any comparison of records because there's no other conclusion one could come to other than that you, in fact, are the unqualified DEI hire. And, and while, we're, while we're speaking of records, um, state of Ohio. Y'all know me. Y'all know how I feel about Ohio. I got a kinship with you. But this your mans? Now. <laughs> we're we're going to get a good fried bologna sandwich right now. All right. This is the guy. This is the guy who makes it. But I, I you know, <laughs> I'll tell you another story. <laughs> That's right. He probably does have an IQ of 210, but don't tell him that. <laughs> don't tell him that. So, <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> so I just, I, I, I just, uh, you know somebody's struggling on stage when they start just talking to the crowd like, hey, how y'all doing? Hey, 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 how y'all feeling? Hey, give it up for the ladies, huh? Give it up, give it up for the ladies. Hey, uh, if, you, if, if you got fingernails, clap. If you got fingernails, round of applause. Yeah, give it up, give it up for your fingernails. Between his terrible record, his lack of any consistency, and the complete absence of charisma. How in the hell did he get elected, Ohio? How in the hell did he get elected? How did you even pay attention to him long enough to realize that he was somebody that you like? See, that's why I went with Ozzie Newsom. That's why I went out, because you betrayed yourselves. You betrayed yourselves, Ohio. And this is one of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, which is this idea that like, well, okay, these marriages were fundamentally, you know, they were, they were maybe even violent, but certainly they were unhappy. And so getting rid of them and making it easier for people to shift spouses like they change their underwear, that's going to make people happier in the long term. And maybe it worked out for the moms and dads, though I'm skeptical, but it really didn't work out for the kids of those marriages. Ah, I get it now. Now. I get it now. It's the sorry husbands. I get it. It's the sorry husbands that voted for J.D. Vance because he felt like he gave them a way to forcibly keep their wives in the marriage. Now, now I got it. Now they they not know we're not gonna do right. We just gonna make it illegal for her to leave. That's 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 what it is. I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna do me. I'm just make sure that she can't she can't do her. She's also gonna be doing me. You know what? Why don't we run that back? And this is one of the great tricks that I think the sexual revolution pulled on the American populace, which is this idea that like, well, okay, these marriages were fundamentally, you know, they were, they were maybe even violent, but certainly they were unhappy. And so getting rid of them and making it easier for people to shift spouses like they change their underwear, that's going to make people happier in the long term. And maybe it worked out for the moms and dads, though I'm skeptical, but it really didn't work out for the kids. So if I got this straight, Despite the fact that people say that it worked out for them to get a divorce, you challenge that. So apparently, J.D. Vance knows better than people about their own situations. Not to mention the fact that he ignores the damage that occurs when people decide to stay in an abusive relationship. Because that's never traumatic to the kids. 
No, that's never traumatic to the kids when an abusive relationship is just allowed to continue in perpetuity. And then you add on top of that the fact that these are people who actively don't want to be together but are legally obligated to stay. How's that going to work out? That was worse for Ohio than J.R. Smith's timeout. I can't think of anything more damaging he possibly could have said. Look, what I was basically saying is that we're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? I just wanted to ask that question. So let me get this straight. In an election, in which your mission is to wrongfully convince women that you aren't aggressively hostile towards them, you attack childless cat ladies? That was what, that was the move for you. That's what you decided to do. Caitlin Clark just catching strays for no reason. She did nothing to deserve this. We're effectively run in this country via the Democrats, via, via our corporate oligarchs, by a bunch of childless cat ladies who are miserable at their own lives and the choices that they've made. And so they want to make the rest of the country miserable, too. And it's just a basic fact. You look at Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, AOC, the entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. And how does it make any sense that we've turned our country over to people who don't really have a direct stake in it? Childless cat ladies. There is growing criticism online right now to those comments, including from actress Jennifer Aniston. April, if your problem in the last election was suburban women, is this what you want voters to be hearing right now? Now, J.D., I have had a longstanding beef with Jennifer Aniston. It goes all the way back to the fact that uh, people don't uh, see Friends as the living single reboot that it actually is. Also, that you had a whole network show that didn't see fit to include black people in it at all. Um, and the fact that apparently they were all trust fund babies or they were just picking up envelopes of money because they weren't working but could afford bomb apartments in New York when I was living there working two jobs to live in the basement with a roommate. But I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I've let it all go. And then it actually continued when she took a shot at, at Jamie Foxx and and didn't apologize when she accused him of anti-Semitism. Me and, me and Jennifer Aniston are kind of are beefing. But one thing I do know is that you probably just want to lay out at this point, considering the fact that you have staked out ground opposite the women who you need to woo, I'm going to tell you one thing, they love Jennifer Aniston. So just, I would just, I would just stand down. You have Hollywood celebrities saying, oh, well, J.D. Vance, what if your daughter suffered fertility problems? Well, first of all, that's disgusting because my daughter is two years old. And second of all, if she had fertility problems, as I said in that speech, I would try everything I could to try to help her because I believe families and babies are a good thing. That's the whole point is if you believe families and babies are a good thing, you should be trying to promote life. Being tr You should try to promote uh, the, the, the fact that we want to have a good family policy in this country. So you decided to clap back. You decided to clap back and you go with disgusting to characterize her talking about the reality that your daughter will one day become a woman. That's disgusting because she's talking about the eventuality of her growing up. That's is that disgusting? Oh, you know, I get why you want to see her as a, as a child and not a woman, because if you see her as a woman, then you would have to attack her. Uh, I get it because that clearly is your M.O. Or you would have to apologize for her Indianness. Oh, hey, 
see. As you might have heard, Donald Trump's running mate and future star of his own Dateline episode, J.D. Vance, is ruffling quite a few feathers this week. We're effectively run in this country by a bunch of childless cat ladies who look at Kamala Harris. The entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children. Listen up, you wingnut elegy. This country is still controlled by men in systems that were set up by men that are carefully crafted to continue to benefit men. So to put it in women-hating terms, you'll understand you're being hysterical. But let's be clear, there's no correlation between childless people and the presidency. For example, our very first United States president, Mr. George Washington, didn't have children. In fact, he had two stepchildren. That's right, just like someone else I know. And to your point about Kamala not being fit because she's not a mother, I'd like to remind you that no president in the history of the United States has ever been a mother. But maybe if she had five kids with three different men and a scandalous affair with a porn star and was convicted felon, that would be more palatable to Republican men. I mean, my God, are we tired. You sad, diet, Mountain Dew drinking, couch humping, dolphin porn aficionado, all of us childless cat and dog ladies are gonna go from childless and crushing it to childless and crushing you in November. And before you tell me he didn't really fuck a couch, spare me. I grew up in New Jersey in the 80s where everyone had a couch in their basement and I know a couch fucker when I see one. Now what's this I hear about a couch? Okay, so there's this rumor online that J.D. Vance wrote about having sex with his couch. That's not true, and today we're gonna prove it. I should also say that I used to work in democratic politics, and so as much as I hate J.D. Vance, I hate misinformation more. Anyway, here's a page. Uh, there's no number, but it's 179. Let's give it a read. During my first year at Yale, I felt like nobody would accept the real me. A working class kid who spent every night and sucking the cotton cheeks of mamma's couch while the ottoman watched. Pushing that cushion with my eager little between its blow the back out of this dirty bend it over like a recliner. Unlike my classmates, I didn't grow up with a chaise lawn. I had a Well, I'm sure we will all handle this responsibly as a country. this happen? How did the wheels fall off this fast? J.D. Vance gotta be on the worst potential VP run since Sarah Palin said anything. I think it's a profound contradiction, but maybe it's not that complicated. I know there are a lot of folks who say, what's going on with some of these Silicon Valley folks veering into Trump world with, with J.D. Vance and, and, and backing Trump? What are they thinking? Silicon Valley is supposed to be, you know, they're supposed to care about climate. They're supposed to be, you know, I don't know, pro-science and rational and libertarian. So <laughs> normally libertarians don't like authoritarians. What's up with that? I think it's actually, we've made it way too complicated. It's super simple. These are very rich men <laughs> who have decided to back the Republican Party that tends to do good things for very rich men. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you. Right. And by the way, that's, that's, yeah. that's kind of what you're getting with. That's kind of what you're getting with JD, right? So uh, I, I knew a lot of people like him when, when I got to Harvard. I found a lot of people like him who would say whatever they needed to to get ahead. And five years ago, that seemed like being the anti Trump Republican. So that's what he was. Uh, talked about how he was unfit, how he was cynical, um, called him an opioid, which is kind of a weird thing to say about a person, but definitely a really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but a, but I mean, for somebody whose identity is that they're connected to Appalachia, which has an opioid crisis, that really is the darkest thing you could possibly say about Donald Trump, at least in public. Five years well, later, well, the way he gets ahead 
is that he's the greatest guy since uh, sliced bread. Oh, we all know a social climber when we see one, and no pound of makeup can hide your social climbing. And I actually watched this exact same process with somebody else I got to know uh, in my days in the Midwest, which was uh, my former governor, Mike Pence, who I watched start out as an evangelical Christian who cared about rectitude and family values, and then get on board with a guy who was uh, uh, mixed up with a porn star, make excuses for him, so that he could have power. And then he did. He got four glorious years, I guess, as vice president of the United States. <laughs> and it ended on the west front of the Capitol with Trump supporters proposing that he be hanged for <laughs> using the one shred of integrity he still had to stand up to an attempt to overthrow the government. Right. So I guess, maybe not as a politician, but as a human being, what I'll say is that I hope things work out a little bit better for J.D. Vance than they did for my <laughs> Somehow I doubt it, but you're just slow enough to try. Bro, you even lost Tommy Lauren. I think they're gonna replay the clip, and they already have. I mean, they already have about him calling, you know, women and calling Kamala Harris and others childish, childless cat ladies. If Ooh, we're trying to win, catch that. wow. If we're trying to win suburban women, and this is something that he said a while back. But mm -hmm. if you're trying to win suburban women and you call suburban women childless cat ladies, you're not going to convince them to come over to your side. No question. I think it's funny as a Republican, but I don't think a lot of suburban women that are on the fence are going to find it funny. And also, apparently, your abortion stance on your website. But that's just another thing that's flexible. Man, you ain't loyal to nobody and no thing. And I can tell you this, Trump ain't going to like this. He's not going to like this at all. Not the disloyalty, but the constant gaffes keeping you in the news. He's not going to like that. That is his brand. That is, that is a specific Trump brand being so maniacal and making so many mistakes that you just flood the internet with memes. That is his thing. And after all of this, I got to ask, man, are you a Democrat? Uh, the addition of J.D. Vance uh, to this ticket, it's, it's incredibly uh, bad choice. Um, I think uh, Donald Trump, I know him, and he's probably sitting and watching the TV, and every day, uh, Vance, it comes out, Vance has done something more extreme, more weird, more erratic. Uh, Vance seems to be more erratic and more extreme than President Trump. And I'll bet President Trump is sitting there, scratching his head and wondering, why did I pick this guy? Uh, the choice may be one of the best things he ever did for Democrats. What do you mean? Now, the president has about 10 days, 10 days before uh, the Ohio um, ballot is locked in, and he has a choice. Does he keep Vance on the ticket, uh, where uh, he's, he probably, he's, he already has a whole lot of baggage. He's probably going to be more baggage over the weeks because we'll hear more things about him, or does he pick someone new? It's his choice. At a time like this, I think it's important to think of the real victims of J.D. Vance's horrifically bad VP run. And that is Tim Scott and Byron Donalds. <laughs> Y'all got passed over for this dude! By the way, I have an email list that I maintain and I have a newsletter that I send out periodically as well. I would love for you to get on my email list. Feel free to shoot me a message at reese.waters at gmail.com. That's R-E-E-S-E -E dot W-A-T-E-R-S at gmail.com. And the same goes if you have any suggestions for videos, if you have any nominees for Races of the Week, if you have something that you are troubled by or you just want to throw me a kudos, feel free to email me. I don't always get a chance to look at all of the comments, but I definitely look at all of the emails and I respond. Mm -hmm.